Good morning. Sorry, I was opening the doors for ventilation. It's good to see you all this morning. I've been at sea level for a week. It caught up with me. <laughs> Kevin and I just returned last night from a wonderful time in Belize. I felt safer there than I have for a long time. We got tested going into the country, tested leaving the country, so I can tell you that we are COVID free at the moment, and uh, that's good news. I want to let you know about some of the rest of the staff that you may be wondering. Kyle, talk, I talked to Kyle this morning. I forgot there, that's better. <laughs> um, I talked to Kyle this morning and he is doing great, but thought he would be gone today so that you all would feel more comfortable upon his return. He has been isolating for more than his 10 days, so he's good to go, but we'll see him back. Welcome back from camping. Larissa's back with us and um, Michael's up there, so we're all pretty good. Jerry, you're good. Jerry's good. We're all good. Um, Brian is still on his vacation. He will be back next Sunday. And I want to thank Jenny and Judy for providing music for us this morning and helping out with that leadership. So thank you both very much. And I want to thank Jean McPherson for setting in on the organ for us this morning. It was wonderful to have you, and I look forward to the post lute. So we're glad to have her with us this morning. Next Sunday, August 22nd, we will have Joining the Church Day. So if you have been thinking you would like to become a member of this church, if it's that time for you, please let me know, and we will be happy to welcome you into our membership next week. August 29th, we're going to be having our, starting our new schedule. And we'll have a service at 8.30 and a service at 10.45, and in between from 9.30 to 10.30, we'll have something we're calling Koinonia Hour. Koinonia meaning fellowship, meaning community, and we really are going to see that time as a time to get to know each other. It won't be, well, I don't know them, they go to a different service. That may still be true, but we'll have a chance of coming together in lots of ways. If you're interested in helping us change Barker Hall just a little bit to make that more conducive for that time, we are having a meeting this Thursday at 4.3. This after, one of those times, look in the bulletin, it's there <laughs> at four o'clock. So look for that. If you want to be a part of that, if decorating is really your thing and, or you have a good vision of how to create different spaces in the large room, Lori and I would love to have you be a part of that conversation. And someone has said to me, are we really going to still do two services with all that's going on? As of now, yes. So we'll just say, as of now, yes. And I'm sorry that I wish I could, don't you all wish we had a, a definitive answer for all of these things? As I grabbed this mask today, and I remember it was one of my first ones, and I thought, really, just really? So I am with you. I feel with all of you that, ugh, but there's nothing we can do except continue to do the best we can and make good choices, or the best we can, anyway. So for now, we'll keep chugging along and hoping to celebrate on August 29th with our new services and a ministry fair. I don't know that we can do the ministry fair and the burritos in the basement. We might have to figure that all out. We might have to move it all out of doors, which feels a lot better. Or we could do burritos outdoors and ministry fair downstairs, but nobody would come to the ministry fair then. I know this. Uh, so we'll, we'll figure that all out. So just keep staying tuned. If you aren't getting emails from us every Friday, please let Michael know. Um, then you will start to know more what's happening, and that way you can have the latest news as it unfolds. Because as we all know, sometimes on Friday we might have to make the decision of what we do on Sunday. Joni Calhoun is here. Always a treat to get to hear from her as she shares with us some of her passions for ministry, and I hope that you will catch some of that as you hear her. Today I have two functions uh, representing the Missions and Outreach Committee. Um, I think we have a few slides uh, that will highlight our new covenant missionary. Her name is Fatima 
Kutela. She is from the Congo, but she serves in West Angola. Her husband is also a missionary with the General Board of Global Ministries, and he serves in East Angola. Um, I, I have a picture of their family, and I'm sorry it's small, but it will be on the bulletin board. They have two sets of twins, and uh, the daddy said, it's not on my side of the family, it's on her side. So they have two 16 years old and two 14 years old, and then one uh, girl who is 10. Uh, let's see here. Oh, he did get it. Okay. Can you see the slide? All right. <clears throat> um, let me do this. And then uh, also in the Friday uh, news, there was a blurb about the Dixie Fire in California. Um, if you will make any donation by check, make it to Mountain View and put Dixie Fire in, in the memo line and we will see it gets to the right place. We know that there are 400 homes that have already been destroyed, and so we want you to have a chance to participate in that by helping uh, them get the items that they need. Um, Fatima and her husband both graduated from Africa University, which is our Methodist University, supported by our apportionments. Uh, <clears throat> she's also an agricultural uh, agent, and she is working with widows of pastors in West Angola, helping them to know what to plant and to plant year-round. So just keep tuned for some more news about Fatima and her work, and we hope that you'll soon be familiar with her and claim her as your own covenant missionary. Thank you. Please join me in the call to worship. Power and might and majesty belong to God who created and is creating. Thanks be to God for God's mighty wonders. Like the image of the powerful wind and the heavens as a garment, God's majesty is revealed in all creation. We look around us at the wonders and marvel and the infinite variety and beauty which God has created. Who are we that God should pay attention to us? We are God's beloved children, the stewards whom God has selected to care for God's world. Amen. Please rise as you're able and join us in the opening hymn.
the kids to come on up. I see Eleanor and Hannah come on up, and there's Julia. Come on up and we'll chat, you guys. Okay, did we have a good week? I know we're getting ready for another exciting week, aren't we? What's happening this week? School starts. Are you feeling pretty excited about it? Oh, good. I'm, I'm going to think about you guys this week and hope that school goes well. Very fun. Well, I have a question for you. Or I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine that you have a birthday party to go to. Okay? This could be your very best friend. Maybe it's your brother or sister. Maybe it's a parent or a grandparent or a cousin. Whoever it is, think about this person. And now imagine you have spent so much time making the perfect gift. Maybe you had to go and buy special materials. Maybe you had to spend a lot of time gluing and cutting and coloring. You worked so hard on this gift. At the end of it, you were so excited to give it to this person. And you get to the birthday party, and they're ready to open the presents. And you hand yours, and you're so excited. And the person you've given it to just looks at it and just places it down and doesn't even open it. How does that make you feel? Kind of sad? Yeah. And then what if they do open it and they look at it and they go, ah, oh, nice, and they just throw it to the side? How does that make you feel? Yeah, kind of sad, kind of badly. Why did I put all this effort and work in, right? What did you want them to do if you give them a gift? They want, you want them to be excited, right? Is there a word you want to hear from them? Thank you. You really want them to say thank you. You have put so much time and effort into this gift. What you want to hear is a thank you. Thank you is a kind of important word, right? Even if that person looked at your gift and just said thank you and set it down, it would feel a little bit better, right? Thank you is the way we acknowledge that somebody has done something for us. When was the last time that you said thank you to somebody? Can you think about it? Yeah. Do you think you say thank you to somebody every day? You try to? Well, that's a good thing. I think you should because there are people around us who do amazing things for us every single day, right? We can thank our families for loving us. We can thank our families for taking care of us. Thank our friends for making us laugh. We can thank our teachers this week, right? Well, let me tell you, that word thank you isn't just, isn't just for people. We can also thank God, can't we? God has made some pretty amazing things, right? When we look around at all that God has created, we should say thank you, right? Look around this room right here. Look at all these fabulous people who are here who care about you and who love you. We can thank God for all of them. We can thank God for your families who love you. We can thank God for the people who God brings into your life, right? We can also thank God for this earth. I want you to think about outside, what outside looks like. We were just camping, weren't we, Eleanor and Hannah? And I know you got to go to the beach, didn't you? When we're out in the world, it's really easy to see things to say thank you to God for, right? The ocean, the forest, the trees, the moose, right? There you go. All kinds of things we can say thank you to God for. God has created each and every one of us. God loves us. And God has given us a world full of wonders all kinds of things for us to say thank you for. So today, and this whole week, your job is to go out and find something beautiful every single day and then say thank you to God. Can you do that? Okay, can we pray you guys? Hey God, thank you for our world and thank you for every person in it. Thank you for the animals and the trees and the flowers, and everything around us. Help us to remember to look around and say thanks. We love you, God. Thanks for loving us. Amen. You guys can go back with your families.
Let us join in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come before you today learning about thanks and remembering that we are to give thanks to you in many times and ways and places, always to be thankful for that which you have given us, for the great earth that you have created. We give you thanks. We give you thanks in so many ways and times and places. And yet we forget, we get busy, we look at the world around us and it doesn't seem so good all of a sudden and we forget. Help us to remember who you are and who you made us to be so that we will find ways to always offer thanks, even in the midst of difficult times. We come today offering you that thanks, but knowing that sitting among us are people who have concerns and worries and we ask that you would give them your peace. People sitting among us and people in our congregation who this day aren't here, who have physical ailments and we pray that you would give them your strength. And people who this day feel lonely and hurt and wonder and we ask that you would give them your love and that you would remind us that we are to be instruments of your love and your peace. We come and we ask. We ask you for so many things that we forget to stop and recognize the things that we have been given. And we offer you thanks for your son who came to show us the way, to show us the path, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I'm reading Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of the, thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou hast visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Thank you, Margaret. There's something about the Psalms in King James that seems necessary, doesn't it? I appreciate that reading. One of the things that I would tell you that I am thankful for today as we talk about this psalm of thanks is being with you all. One of the things that was so difficult, and I really hope we don't have to return to this, was standing here by myself doing worship. Because it didn't feel worship-like. It didn't feel the same as having someone read the scripture or share a mission moment or thank you so much as the deer is one of my favorite tunes. So I appreciated the words very much that you sang for us. Having us come together is something that I am thankful for, to have many voices participate in worship. Trust me, it's not fun to stand here all by yourself. Some of you participated and did that. I know you led some music then. You did a devotion for us. You did. It, it was strange, wasn't it? To not know if people were there. So for as long as we can, I am thankful to be here together with you all. We are continuing the Psalms series. Today and next Sunday are our last ones. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have learned some things and grown and understanding the Psalms some. Uh, this Psalm is the Psalm of Thanksgiving. And when I picked it, I thought, I'm going on vacation. I get back on Saturday. What would be easy? <laughs> it's a real thing. So it hit me, Thanksgiving, that's easy. We give thanks to God. Why? Because God created this beautiful world around us and with joy we should be able to give thanksgiving. And I was excited to think about thanksgiving and say that. And I thought, okay, what else could I say? And I thought, you know, Larissa talks to the children about God loving them and giving thanks all the time. Because we want those children to have that in their minds strongly because we know that unfortunately the world will treat them differently as they grow from this place and we want them to have that basis. And as I was thinking about Thanksgiving several weeks ago, it struck me how important that basis is that this church provides children, all of us, but our children. Uh, because as they go out into that world, isn't it wonderful for them to know here is a place where they can be loved. You may have noticed the sermon title was, hey, Thanks. That's a nod to Larissa, because how does she start every single prayer? Hey, God, which is a little different, isn't it? How many of you start your prayers that way? Hopefully, some of you do occasionally, especially if you're thinking about the kids and you think, hey, God. And maybe that's okay if we say, hey, God, thanks, amen. Do you think that's enough? Hey, God, thanks, amen. Maybe that is enough, and just coming out of vacation, maybe that's enough of a sermon to say to you all, hey, hey, you all, say thanks to God, amen? And then I would walk away and be done. And you'd all go to lunch early and be happy, but, but that's not who I am. And I started to struggle more and more with this psalm, and I started to think, 
there's something deeper here than let's just say thanks to God. Surely there's something more. And so I started studying up on Psalm 8 because I knew that you all wanted to know more about Psalm 8 than just to say thanks to God. So here you go. Psalm 8 is unique in several ways, but one of them is that it is the very first hymn in the book of Psalms. You'll remember way back when Brian talked about the Psalms and the music of the Psalms. Well, this is the first hymn. All the way, Psalm 1 was sort of an introduction to the whole Psalms, but then two through seven are moaning and groaning and complaining and asking God to smite people like we talked about last week. Psalm 7 is a plea for help against those who persecute us. Whoa. Those were kind of fun to talk about last week, but this is a psalm, a hymn of thanksgiving, the first hymn, so that's important. Uh, the second thing that's important about it is it's the only song, the only psalm, the only hymn that addresses God throughout all of the verses. You'll find others that have a lot to say to God, uh, but this one is the only one that is beginning to end about God. And we see that as verse one says, O oh Lord, and verse nine ends the same way, reminding us that this is a prayer to God, an offering of thanksgiving to God. It's also a unique and interesting psalm because it teaches us something about our relationship with God. You may remember earlier in the psalms I said that scripture can teach us three things. It can teach us about God, and we've seen some of those psalms. It can teach us about ourselves, and we've seen a little of that maybe last week as we discovered why someone might ask God to get the enemies. But it can also teach us about our relationship with God. And this scripture is a clear understanding of our relationship with God. You may have heard Margaret at verse four say, what are human beings that you care about them? Why are you mindful of mortals? That's a question that we often wonder, isn't it? Does God care about us? Does God know of our existence? Does God know every day what's happening in our lives? And this goes on to explain that. You have made mortals lower than God, but crowned them with glory and honor, given them dominion over the works of your hands, created for them all that we see. And that's why this psalm is a thanksgiving of creation. Uh, the kids are making creations with Play-Doh today and other things they've got going on over there to remind them of creating and creation, to remind them of all that God has given us. You don't have enough Play-Doh for everybody, do you? Oh, well, would have been fun. Make friends with a small person that has some and maybe they'll share. But to remind us of being thankful. And I was excited by the idea of being thankful for all that God has given and created of being thankful for those things in our lives. Like I said, Kevin and I just came from Belize. If you haven't been there, beautiful beaches. The jungle was interesting. The cave formations, oh, beautiful. It was easy while there to think of giving thanks to God. One of the other things that I did while there was didn't pay a lot of attention to the electronic world. I, I checked my emails occasionally in case there was a crisis. I don't know why the staff can handle anything and there were no crises and that was good. Didn't really read the news much and that was really a blessing. It's much easier to give thanks sitting on the beach without paying attention to the rest of the world. We were on an island that only had our resort on it. And it only had, at one time, there was just Kevin and I and another couple. It was truly that desert island kind of thing that you think about. And it was wonderful. It was wonderful to not really care, to be honest with you, about what else was going on. And to think about God's creation. And to be thankful for it. And I thought, how easy it would be to come back and tell you all, thank, be thankful for God. And maybe talk a little bit more in depth about that, but let's be thankful. But then we got to the airport and we had to get our COVID test before we could come home. And reality came back right away. Reality came back right away. 
and we had to get to the airport really early, but the airport in Belize City doesn't really have much of a waiting area, it's just all crammed in there. I was glad to know that everyone with me had just been negative on COVID also. There was no distancing at all. It, and it was loud, and it started to get to me. I don't know if any of you have that issue when you're in a space and it's just uh, frantic almost. And I tried to look for beauty, and I couldn't find any. And, and then I started getting, I got on my phone, and I started reading. I read about the spikes in the number of cases, especially in the South, and pediatric cases where we've not been so worried about our children until now. And then I read that there was an awful earthquake again in Haiti, and over 300 people so far have died there along that same fault line. And I remembered, I remembered the last bad earthquake and all that was going on then. And then I read that the UN issued a report. They called it Red Alert about climate change and the reality of it and what will happen if we don't stop now, that we've already done so much damage that the repair will be hard. And then I read about Afghanistan and what's happening there. And I kept seeing all these things and wondered and worried. And I thought, I can't give thanks on Sunday. There's nothing to be thankful for. Look how awful things are in our world. Look how awful things are. And I thought, I'm just going to say we're not going to have church Sunday. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say there's no church. But the Friday email had already gone out, and some of you were planning on being here, and the music was going to be wonderful, I knew. And OK, I'll come. And I'll just play like I haven't read the news yet. I'll play like nothing bad is happening in the world. Uh, do you ever want to do that? Do you ever want to do that? To be on that island with bad internet and not know? Just not know. Because it's too hard. Because what can I do about any of those things? I got my vaccine, I wear my mask, I do the things I was supposed to do. I've encouraged others to do that. I try as best I can to take care of God's creation. I try to encourage and advocate for that. I try to support the green team and all that they're doing. I try. There's nothing I can do about Haiti, but I can try. I can't do anything about all of that, and so sometimes just Getting away from it is what we need to do, or ignore it. But then I thought there's got to be something else. There's got to be something else that turns me around and helps me feel better. And I knew it wasn't being thankful for God, because this stuff is awful. But then I read the psalm again, sitting there on the plane, crammed in, realizing there's a reason this psalm finally came. After seven psalms of awful stuff, read them, you'll see. It makes what's going on in the world today look mild. After seven psalms, there's a reason this psalm of thanksgiving appears. And it's a song to be sung. Why is that? And, and I did some more research and some reading, and I read that, did you know that being grateful, that a feeling of gratitude actually helps you feel better? even if you have to kind of fake it. A friend of mine had a youth group that was awful to each other. I've never seen such mean teenagers in a youth group. They were awful. They would cut each other down and say mean things all the time. And, and he said to me, I don't know what to do. I said, well, I've heard of this trick. Try this. And he did. So every time he heard a teen say something mean to another one, they had to say five nice things back. Maybe some of you have tried that with people in your life. They had to say five nice things back. Oh, they didn't like doing that at all. They didn't like it at all, but what they found was after time, it changed. It changed that whole dynamic, the whole atmosphere of that youth group. As people said, I don't want to think of five nice things. Maybe if I just say one nice thing, that'll be good. And they started seeing the better in each other. And I realized maybe for me that that's why I need to think about being thankful and offering gratitude to God. 
Not because it changes the world, but because it changes me. And maybe changing me is an okay thing, especially when I feel grumpy or anxious or scared. So I tried to think of five good things. Because if studies show, and I'm all about what studies show, if science shows that me being grateful will help me, I need to think of that. So that's one of the reasons I told you I was grateful for you all being here and for leadership up here. It's important to me, and I'm thankful and grateful. I was grateful this morning that the sky was blue, not smoky gray. I know it's going to come back, but I was thankful for that and grateful. I was grateful that my son is visiting my granddaughter right now because I know that that's an important time for him and his sister and for him and his niece. And I felt thankful that they could go and do that. So I thought, okay, that's good. That's two. What's some more? That's three. Oh, good. Two more. Can I think of two more things to be thankful for? Two more things. And it was kind of tricky, to be honest, to think of anything big. And then I thought, maybe this can be something little. Maybe I can be thankful for something little. Something little. Maybe I can be thankful for people who greeted me this morning and said to me, how was your vacation? And that was nice, because they cared about me. And, and I th I'm thankful for that. And I'm also thankful that I got to take a vacation, that you as a church support that I need time away sometimes. And I'm glad of that and thankful. And then I started thinking, and the more I thought of those things I'm thankful for, that I offer gratitude for, more kept flooding. And so I just wanted to stop for a second. You don't have to call them out, but you can. Maybe we should. What's something that you're grateful for this morning? Little or big? Let's hear a couple. Go ahead. What's something you're grateful for? Uh oh. Oh no. Okay, let me go back. Studies show that people who are grateful start to feel better. What's something you're grateful for? I'm grateful that my brother is alive and healthy. Grateful that her brother is alive and here with us. Julia. I can't hear her, sorry. Family. family, yes, and you're there with your family, how wonderful. Good thing to be, yes, Chris. Grateful for her church family, yes. We are all grateful for that. Jean. Life. Life, just life. That's a good one, isn't it? Anybody else? Cheryl. I'm grateful for the She's grateful for the wonderful music that lifts her spirits, definitely. Anybody? Sharon. <laughs> She's grateful for the animal refuge she went to yesterday, even though it was hot. <laughs> Anybody? Grateful for, friends. grateful for friends. Good. Anybody else want to share one out? How does it make you feel to hear some? Oh, Stephen. Uh, I was going to grateful for some discomfort for Des. <laughs> grateful for discomfort for Des because it means a big, baby. a big baby, a big healthy baby. We're excited for you all. Blessings there. How does it make you feel to hear people start to talk about gratitude, things in life that they're thankful for? It makes me feel better. It gives us a positive spin on life. I'm not saying we should be Pollyannish and say, oh, there's nothing wrong. Of course not. And of course we have responsibilities. But we also are blessed people to look around and hear these blessings, to talk about family, friends, life, new life, music, raising our spirits. And I think that's the purpose of this psalm. It's not to say, oh, no. It's to say, oh, yes, to life. It's to say, we remember, God, the beauty around us and all that we have. But it's to help lift us up. Uh, just like last week, it lifted us up a little to think about doing unto the enemies, those who persecute us. But this week, it helps us to remember to give thanks for the things we can find in our lives. 
So I want to encourage you this week. I like that Larissa told the kids this, and I thought the same. Look around every day and find something to be thankful for. And when you start to feel really negative and claiming that, find five things to be positive for. If it works for a youth group, it could work for us. Will it be difficult some days? Yes. Yes, it will. But will it help us raise our spirits? And we could all use that. Amen. from this place and sing, seeing how great is our God. Amen.